The Signal Oil Program, The Whistler. into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. Yes, friends, it's time for the Whistler. And remember, let every traffic signal remind you, with new signal gasoline, you do go farther than ever. Look for the familiar big yellow and black circle sign that identifies those popular signal service stations throughout the West from Canada to Mexico. And now, the Whistler's strange story, The Sellout. It didn't take Lloyd Miller very long to learn one bitter fact, that a bankroll, when subjected to a steady pummeling from the adverse left hand of Lady Luck, can become anemic in less than no time. Cards, dice, and horses. When they're wrong, they're all wrong. Lloyd found that out. Of course, he told himself it was just a streak of bad luck. It would pass. But until it did, there were obligations to meet. Pressing ones. That was why he left his drafting table this Thursday afternoon, adjusted his tie nervously, took one last long puff at his cigarette, inhaled the smoke, let it out in a deep sigh, and knocked on the door to Mr. Collins' office. Yes, yes, come in. Uh, are you busy, Mr. Collins? A little, aren't we all? <laughs> well, yes, I guess we are. Uh, how are you coming along with the sketches of the sonic detection device? The sketches? Uh, fine, Mr. Collins, just fine. Good, keep at them. I'll see you later. But I came in to see you about something. Yes? Well, let's have it, Miller, let's have it. I've been down to the accounting department, Mr. Collins, and... What the devil were you doing down there? Well... I'm a little pinched for money. I wanted them to okay in advance. Let me get this straight. On a hundred and a quarter a week, you're pinched? Yes. I had some unexpected expenses, you see. Things came up suddenly, sort of put holes in my reserve fund. <laughs> it didn't last long. Well, that's too bad. Well, what else? Well, that's all, Mr. Collins. Well, what do you want me to do about it? Well, I thought... I thought perhaps you could call accounting and okay in advance for me. I'm sorry, Miller. No can do. That department is none of my business. But I've got to have two weeks advance. It's an emergency. It's urgent. What's the emergency? Just an emergency. I really do Look, need... Look, if the accounting department turned you down, I can't put in. But, uh, will, uh, Ten Spot help you out on till payday? No, I... No, thanks. I don't want to borrow. Good boy. Now you better get back to your drawing board, huh? Well, hey, excuse me now, William Miller. Busy, you know. Yes, sir. Thanks. That was bad, wasn't it, Lloyd? Turned down. And you do need money badly. You've got 75 cents in your pocket. That's all. And that evening you walk the street trying to figure some way out. But there's only one way. And that's to get the money. But how? How? You're still thinking about it as you let yourself in your flat. The flat you owe two months rent for. You open the door. Parchment. Close the door, Miller. How'd you get in here? Your landlady let me in. Charming woman. Likes to talk. Seems you owe her two months rent, Miller. Well, she knows I'll pay her. That's what I mean. Charming. Maybe overconfident, too. I'm in a spot. <laughs> I know it. Ever see this before? Well, it's my IOU. I'm glad you don't need glasses. Only a calendar. Huh? 
I've had this IOU for six weeks now. I'm getting tired of looking at it. Well, you can afford to wait, can't you? It's only 500 Barsman, I'm going to pay it. All I need is a little... Hey, what you need, Miller, is a little convincing about welching on bets, I mean. Well, I tell you, I'm going to pay it. Sure, you're going to pay it. Now, wait a minute, Barsman. You... No, that rough stuff doesn't go anymore. You won't get by with it. <laughs> You've been to too many movies, Miller. I'm not going to toss you in the river. <laughs> I... You had me going for a minute. I thought you were serious. I am. Huh? Nowadays, it's much more effective and safer. For example, you wake up Monday morning, or any morning for that matter, you're feeling fine, swell. Then that night, you're in the hospital for a long stay. When you get out, you're a little hard to recognize. That way, a lot of other Welchers can see the horrible example. They think twice before sticking the big, bad gambling house owner with a bad IOU. Barsman, I'll get it for you. I swear I'll get it for you. I just had a run of bad luck, that's all. But you're first. You'll get the 500 before anybody else. Shut up and listen. I didn't come here to collect the money. I came here to give you a break. Break? Uh Uh-huh. From uh, from what I hear, you're a draftsman at Brewster Electronics, right? What's that got to do with it? I got a friend who'll pay 2000 for the sketches of the new sonic detection device. Are you crazy? That's government stuff. Secret. Sure. And you're in just the right spot to make them a little less secret. What, oh, do you know what you're talking about? That's a term in federal prison. If you get caught. Well, how can I help getting caught? Listen, how big are those sketches? Oh, well, just regular-sized paper. But they're only pencil sketches. That's perfect. It's perfect for what? For sending them through the mail? Oh, no. No, that's out, Barsman. My friend needs those sketches by Saturday morning. He's in San Francisco. Airmail from Los Angeles will do it. Well, how can I replace them? Easy. You get them back. My friend in San Francisco photographs them and airmails them back. You get them Monday. And who's the wiser? Oh, I, uh, I can't do it. I'd be scared stiff, Barsman. You were scared just a minute ago, remember? Now, here. Here's a thousand on account. There's another package just like this waiting. Well, I... Here's the name and address of my friend in San Francisco. And uh, don't try a double cross. Now, you can take it or leave it. And if I leave it? You won't. Will you? <laughs> I don't think you'll leave it, Miller. But if you do, I'll have to sort of make plans, you know. Think it over, Miller. You can get me at this number. Beacon 2305. Yes, Lloyd, think it over. Mr. Barsman means business this time. You can take it or leave it. And if you leave it, he has plans for you, hasn't he? You try to think rationally, but it doesn't work. For an hour after he's gone, you pace the floor, light cigarettes, throw them away, start toward the phone a dozen times to tell him it's all off, that you won't sell out. You just can't sell out, can you, Lloyd? It's government stuff, important. The FBI will have the finger on you before you can turn around. No, you can't sell out. That's all there is to it. It's almost midnight when you pick up the phone, determined this time. Two, three... Oh, yeah, Miller. Now, what's it going to be? Uh, well, I... Listen, Barsman, I... Go ahead. Okay, I'll do it. Give me the address in San Francisco. <laughs> I knew you were my boy, Miller. Bought and paid for. <laughs> With the prologue of The Sellout, the Signal Oil Company brings you another strange tale by The Whistler. You know, friends, this afternoon while I was looking over one of the new model cars, I was particularly impressed with the results of modern engineering. 
Through clever streamlining and the elimination of unnecessary weight, they not only increased speed and pickup, but they also increased the gasoline mileage. Well, it occurred to me that's the same thing modern engineering has done for signal gasoline. When scientists rearranged the atoms in gasoline molecules to put increased power into new signal gasoline, they not only gave you quicker starting, faster pickup, and higher anti knock that makes even vintage model cars feel young again, but they also achieved a bonus of extra mileage. After all, it's only natural that the gasoline that gets the most efficient performance from your motor also helps you get the most miles per gallon. Well, that's an important point to remember. It's power, the same power that gets extra driving pleasure from your motor that now helps you go farther than ever with new signal gasoline. And now, back to the Whistler. face the fact that the only thing that will get you out of it is cold, hard cash. You know Mr. Barsman. You could see the tight, vicious look around his mouth when he talked about the $500 IOU and the steps he might be forced to take should you choose to turn down his proposition to decide not to sell out and not to mail the sketches to his friend in San Francisco. Yes, there's no future in that, is there, Lloyd? The only way out now is Mr. Barsman's way. And as Friday morning wears on, you work on the sketches at your drafting table, carefully penciling in the important details. Maybe Barsman is right, Lloyd. It might be easier than you think. Miller. What? Oh, yes, Mr. Collins. What's the matter? Oh, nothing. I didn't see you, see you come up. I was kind of busy. Mm -hmm. uh, let me take a look at those sketches, will you? Oh, yes, go right ahead. Uh -huh. oh, not bad, Miller. Yeah. Better outline this relay a little more clearly and print in the, in the tube numbers. Okay, I'll do it right away. When do you think you'll have them ready for photostat? Oh, Tuesday? At the latest. Tuesday it is. Oh, uh, Pat, wait up there a minute. Oh, Mr. Collins? Yes? Uh, do you think you'll be wanting to see these anymore today? Huh? Why? Why'd you ask that? Well, uh, I thought I'd ink them fast and get what I have for photostat. Well... All right, I'll let you alone with them. Thanks. Thanks, Mr. Collins. That's better. That gives you until Tuesday, Lloyd. And the sketches will come back to you Monday morning. Now you work fast. You fill several pages of paper with sketches to look like the ones you're going to mail. That's to make it look good, isn't it, Lloyd? Now, put the real drawings into an envelope. And... You're using a company envelope so it won't attract suspicion. Then you put on an airmail stamp. Another one to make sure you've got enough postage on, and then... Miller! Right? What's the matter? Say, what the devil is wrong with you today? You jumped like a gaffed salmon. You're as pale as a ghost. I feel all right, Mr. Collins. Well, you don't look it. You sure you're all right? Yes, I'm sure. Did you want anything? Yes, come into my office and we'll... What's that? What's what? Oh, a letter, huh? Yes, a letter. It's to my sister. I haven't written to my sister for a long time. Uh -huh. I Using company envelopes, eh? Well, it was the only one I had. Well, don't make a practice of it. Now, come along. Yes, sir. Better bring the letter along. Bring it along? Yes, bring it along. One thing you've got to learn, especially if you ever expect to get married, never leave an unmailed letter laying around. You can mail it in the chute in the corridor. Oh, I can mail it later. There's no hurry, really. Come along, Miller. Don't be one of those fellows who walk around with unmailed letters in their pockets. What I want to see you about won't take long, Miller, and uh, there's the chute. Go ahead, mail it. Oh, but I... Go ahead, man. Now, what's the matter? It's a little too big for the slot. What did you do, write a book? Oh, I'll take it downstairs later. We don't... Wait. No wonder you can't get it in. You've got it crumpled. Here, give it to me. Oh, no, I'll, I'll take it later. Give it to me. There. That did it. 
Now come into my office. You're as jumpy as a cat. Sit down. Yes, sir. Miller, you're a good man. Thanks, Mr. Collins. But you're a little slow. Slow? Yes, apparently too slow for Uncle Sam. The inspector's coming Monday to look at those sketches of the sonic device. Monday? But I said I couldn't possibly have them ready until Tuesday. I can't have them before then. <laughs> well, don't get so upset about it. We'll show him what you've finished and explain the details of the rest. But will he understand? I mean, it's a pretty complicated thing. He'd better wait until we can get the photos. He's an that... inspector, Miller. You know him, McVeigh from Washington. He knows the score. McVeigh? Yes, that's right. I've got him a room at the Continental Hotel. He's flying in Monday morning. <laughs> Those sketches, Lloyd, in the mailbox five floors below. You've got to get that envelope before collection. And there's one at noon. What time is it now? 11.58. You press the button for the elevator. And then you remember the cars are crowded at noon, stop at every floor. You take five flights of stairs at breakneck speed into the lobby in the big brass mailbox at the end of the chute. Oh, Melvin, I wonder if he's... Not yet, Miller. Barsman... What are you doing here? Doing just exactly what I thought I'd have to do. Keep you from getting cold feet and welching again. Look, Barsman, you don't get it. You don't understand. I've got... Barsman, there's the mailman. Please, let me get that envelope and I'll explain later. Please. You were paid 2000 to see that the mailman gets it. Barsman, you've got to let me get that envelope. He's taking the mail out now. He's going to get him there. Come on, get out of this lobby. Barsman, for the love... I said, come on. <laughs> you certainly chilled off fast, Miller quickest case of cold feet on record. What's the idea? An inspector's coming Monday to look at those sketches. Monday? Yeah, the inspector's coming in the morning. What'll I tell him? What'll I say? It's up to you, man. But if those sketches aren't in, they'll know I took them. If I'm the only one who handles them, they'll trace them. They'll find out where they went. It'll be a job for the FBI. They'll get to you. I've seen him pick up a colder trail than this. And suppose you're fixed so you can't talk. You can even do that and they'd get to you. I've seen them do it, Barsman. Yeah. Maybe you got something there. Uh, what's this inspector's name? Uh, McVeigh. You know him? Well, yes. Sir. Find out what hotel he'll stay at. Well, I already know that. The Continental. <laughs> then what are you worried about? We delay him until we're sure the sketches are back. Look, oh, Barsman, he's a government man. He can't do anything. Shut up. Well, listen, there won't be any rough stuff. He'll be delayed until we're sure the sketches are back. You sure you can work it? Sure I can. But you've got to be at the Continental Hotel Monday morning when McVeigh gets there. But why me? Because you know what he looks like. I don't. Just give me the tip. I'll take care of the rest. The rest of the day is agony to you, isn't it, Lloyd? You work over the fake sketches. Your heart in your mouth every time Mr. Collins passes your drafting board. But he doesn't stop, and at last the day is over. Saturday is even worse agony, and Sunday... You wait for a call from Barsman. Cigarettes are piled up on the ashtray by your bed. Your mouth is dry, and the cigarettes don't help, do they? And then toward evening... Hello? Miller? Yes? Listen, be at the hotel at 8 in the morning. Our friend should get there around 8.30. Goodbye. Barsman? Barsman, listen! Barsman! <laughs> That's all, Lloyd. Just be at the Continental Hotel at 8 in the morning. Monday morning to identify McVeigh for Barsman. Now all you've got to worry about is whether Barsman means to kill the inspector or just delay him. Not much sleep tonight, is there? Time goes so slowly. And then it seems to speed up toward morning. 7 o'clock, already 7.30. It's after 8 when you hurry into the lobby of the hotel. Going right now. What kept you? I got here as soon as I could. All right. Then watch that door. What are you going to do, Barsman? Leave that to me. Now sit down and shut up. And tip me off when McVeigh comes in. So you sit next to Barsman and try to read the newspaper. But the page is blank, isn't it? And the door to the hotel, it seems so large, so very large. Why, a thousand people could come through it and you'd miss McVeigh, never see him. 
It's after 8.30. More and more people come in. You can hardly look at them all. Is that McVeigh? That man in the gray hat and blue suit with his back turned, walking toward the desk so you can't see his face. But you've got to, because he walks like McVeigh. He might be McVeigh. Barsman, uh, that man, gray hat, blue suit at the desk. Oh, you idiot, why'd you let him get that far? Get over to that desk before he gets away. Well, you, you, you could check the register. Let the clerk identify me? Not me, go ahead. But he might see me. Listen, if you don't get up there in two seconds, I'll take my chances by putting you where you can't talk. Now, go on. Well, I... All right. What about it? Rick Bay. All right. Get back to the office fast. What are you going to do? Shut up. Now get going. You're sure now it'll never work. And all the way back to the office, you fight the urge to run away. To forget about the whole fantastic plan. Somehow you manage to get a hold of yourself and appear nonchalant as you take the elevator to the fifth floor and walk across the office to your drafting table at the end of the room. And then your knees nearly give way. You have to grab the edge of the table for support. There on the corner of your table are the sketches. No envelope, just the sketches. You grab them up and rush into the mail department. Uh, Robert. Oh, hello, Mr. Miller. Uh, these sketches, they were lying on my desk when I came in this morning. Where'd they come from? Why, I put them there. I thought they belonged in your department. Well, that's so... all? It just came to you and you opened it and put them there? That's all. Why? Oh, oh, nothing. Nothing at all. It's not important. Well, things are looking up now. And you're playing it smart, aren't you, Lloyd? You don't make a point of it with Robert. Nothing unusual at all. You'll forget all about it. You're confident now for the first time. They're the original sketches, complete, all ready for the inspector. At a quarter of ten, the phone rings. Miller speaking. Bosman. Yes? Our friends clear out the other side of town. I arranged a special taxi for them. Hey, what about, uh, you know? We're in. They arrived this morning. Yeah, pretty good service. Yeah. Hey, my boy's going to call me. You can tell him to deliver the passenger now. I'm all ready for him. Okay. And thanks, Sonny. You did a nice job. Whistler will return in just a moment with the strange ending of tonight's story. But now, since your mind is all sharpened up for a good mystery, suppose you try solving this little riddle. What are five important points on a car that the driver seldom ever sees, if at all, but other drivers and pedestrians see them every time they're used? Got it? <laughs> of course, they're the headlights and taillights and stoplights. You can't see them when you're behind the wheel. When you get out of the car, you turn them off. Which probably explains why 51% of the defects found in the recent police traffic safety check were faulty lights. Now, friends, right there is just one of the little ways in which your signal dealer can be of extra service to you. He'll be glad to test your light. And if one of them is out, he'll install a replacement bulb before you can say accident. Maybe your windshield wiper blade is worn and leaving streaks. In just a few minutes, your signal dealer will install a fine new blade for safe, clear vision. You see, signal stations are much more than headquarters for Signal's famous Go Farther gasoline and that great new Signal premium motor oil. Stop in. Wherever you find the big Signal Circle sign in yellow and black, there you'll also find a complete line of services and accessories to help your car run better, look better, and last longer. And now, back to the Whistler. Well, Lloyd, you're out of the woods now, but it was close, wasn't it? The sketches are back at your desk, all ready for McVeigh, the government inspector, after the taxi ride, which conveniently took him to the other side of town. 
A taxi Mr. Barsman arranged for him at exactly the right moment. Yes, you can relax, Lloyd. For the first time in four days, you can relax. At a quarter past eleven, Mr. Collins called you into his office. Naturally, he'll want to be sure you have everything ready for McVeigh. You want me, Mr. Collins? Yes, McVeigh just called. He's on his way. Delayed by some stupid taxi driver who didn't know his way around. Oh? You all ready for him? Yes, the sketches are on my desk. I know they are. I asked Roberts to put them there. What do you mean? I asked Roberts to put them there. That's what I said. I asked Roberts to put them there. Well, what have you got to say, Miller? Where'd you get them? I wondered why you were acting strangely last Friday. I uh, can understand why you were nervous, Miller. You know... You know all about it, don't you? There's no use trying to lie your way out of it, Miller. All right, let's have it. Well, Mr. Collins, I, I needed the money. I didn't know what to do. I had to have it or... Listen, you don't know Barsman. He'd do anything. I... Well, the man in San Francisco photographed the sketches. I sent them to him because Barsman would have... Well, listen, I'll... I'll tell you the whole thing, but you got to understand, Mr. Collins, it's not me, it's Barsman. Barsman? Well, that's why McVeigh was delayed. Barsman did it, so I'd have time to get the sketches back. Well, go on. Go on and call the FBI. I'll tell him everything. So you sold out, huh? That's what was wrong with you. Well, I had to have the money. Wait I... a minute. Yes, Mr. Collins? Get me the FBI, will you? Right away. Yes, sir. He forced me to do it, Mr. Collins. I didn't want to, but he... This is all very interesting, Miller. You'd better organize that story. They'll be here in a few minutes. Yes, sir. I'm rather glad you chose to confess. You see, I had no idea it could have been that serious. You? What? I thought it was a pretty unfortunate mistake, of course, sticking the sketches into the envelope instead of the letter you wrote to your sister, but you... I decided you were in such a state last Friday you could have done anything. You... You didn't know? No, I didn't know. But the sketches, they were to be returned to me, marked personal. They came back in the general mail, of course. What? Yes. You see, in your excitement last Friday, you forgot something. Something that's going to cost you a lot. What do you mean? You carefully put sufficient postage on the letter but you forgot to put on the address. o'clock, The Whistler will bring you another strange tale. The Whistler is broadcast for your entertainment by the marketers of Signal Gasoline and Motor Oil and fine quality automotive accessories and by your neighborhood Signal dealer. Featured in tonight's program were Elliot Lewis, Jack Moyles, and Charles Seals. This program produced by George W. Allen with tonight's story by Russell Hughes, music by Wilbur Hatch, is transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. is your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler. This is Marvin Miller speaking, reminding you to look for those familiar yellow and black circle signs that identify those popular Signal Oil stations throughout the West from Canada to Mexico. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.